I invite him to address the assembly on behalf of the General Assembly. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Wa sahbihi al-muntajabin. فبشر عباد الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه آقای رئیس انتخاب جنابالی را به ریاست هفتاد و هشتمین نشست مجموعی سازمان ملل متحد تبریک میگویم I congratulate you and give you felicitations on the 78th uh, General Assembly of the United Nations. Since last year when I addressed everyone from this podium, the world has witnessed bitter as well as sweet events. But the world, nearly eight decades following the establishment of the United Nations, the new session of the General Assembly commences as the world is experiencing unprecedented and historic changes. Meanwhile, the assurance of a luminous future for human society lies in the devoted observance of lofty virtues that guide people towards excellence and noble ideals. What better source than the word of the Creator? to encapsulate the essence of humanity and elevate the inherent values of mankind. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Quran beckons humanity towards rationality, spirituality, the truth and justice. It expounds upon the unity of mankind, proclaiming all earthly inhabitants. It seeks to guide all towards human dignity, which will lead to the blessings sought by mankind. What has the Quran said? to infuriate and focus the attention of those who seek power and hold the reins of power. The Quran says, humans do not accept oppression. And with this pursuit, you will be able to reach elevated divine values the Quran speaks of equality among humans. It says that they were all created equally from a single mother and father. The Quran, even though there are differences, natural differences between men and women, sees them as completing one another and direct in the eyes of the Creator and equal in the eyes of the Creator. The Quran defends the sanctity of the family and sees children as gifts entrusted to us by God. Moreover, the Quran deems, believes in serving those who have less than we do and it directs our beliefs and faiths as forbidden recognizing the sanctity of these values is this the first time that the words of god of the omnipotent are being burned presuming while they do so that they can extinguish the divine voice for eternity? Did Nimrod, Pharaoh, Karon, and Caesar triumph over Abraham, Moses, and Jesus? The 
the Quran forbids all forms of violence in human interactions and deems respect towards Abraham, Moses, and Jesus on par and equal to with the sanctity for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These understandings that bring unity and divine teachings that inspire, that build human characters, that build societies, that build progress for human societies will never be burned, is eternal. they remain impervious the fires of disrespect will not over, will not overcome the truth and the divine truth mr president islamophobia and cultural apartheid witnessed in Western countries evident in actions ranging from the desecration of the Holy Quran to the ban on hijab in schools and numerous other deplorable discriminations are, are not worthy of human dignity even more concerning is that behind the scene there seems to be an agenda which seeks to divert attention with using the tool of freedom of speech as one Westerner said now that the West is faced with a crisis of identity sees the world as a jungle and presents itself in the best of light, lights as a beautiful garden and some potent interests see this fabrication as their tools of choice these apartheid has targeted the Muslim community particularly the immigrants immigrants who are themselves victims of colonial policies in alignment with all adherents of faith and advocates for freedom, we firmly believe that reverence for religions should hold a prominent position on the United Nations agenda in order to indoctrinate the proper framework for respect to all world religions. Concurrently with the war on Islam, we are also seeing a war against the framework of the family the family is the most fundamental column that has supported human development which is now under attack today crimes against humanity are not just the occupation of lands and oppression against people and mass killings but it's also a concerted attack on the family itself that is also a crime against humanity the protection of the nucleus of the family made up of the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman is an inherent truth to be accepted by the entire world the proper teachings of the populations at large throughout the world unless done so within the framework of the family were not seek uh, will not yield the desired results these are divine words mother father natural words and concepts such as family actions that can be seen as wanting to bring cessation to the human race itself 
we are today in need of a world movement that brings commitment to the existence of the framework of the family so that all members of the families can experience life in peace and stability next to each other. We ask, therefore, all religious leaders to adhere to their historical responsibilities in defending the sanctity of the family and move against fabrications. We expect from the United Nations to put a very high priority on its agenda and give the proper protection to the framework of the family. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves at a critical junction in history. The global landscape is also undergoing a paradigm shift towards an emerging international order, a trajectory that is not reversible. The equation attributed to the hegemony of the West no longer resonates with the diverse realities of today's world. The former old liberal order catering to the ambitions of voracious rulers whose hunger has no end and to that of the capitalist has been relegated to obsolescence. In short, to endeavor to universalize American ideals throughout the world have proven to be failures. The Iranian nation takes pride in having instrumentally unmasked the true nature of the rulers in both the East and West through its Islamic revolution. In conjunction with other nations of West Asia, Iran has played a significant role in defeating the global arrogance. Now that global nations exhibit heightened resistance and awareness as non-Western powers have emerged, there is a collective hope for the establishment of a novel and equitable world order. Central to the forthcoming international order is the abandonment of global arrogance in favor of regional cooperation and orders. The Islamic Republic of Iran advocates for maximum economic and political convergence within and between regions and is interested in interacting with the global community under the principle of justice. However, as independent nations increasingly align themselves towards cooperation and convergence, certain powers are attempting to incite conflicts in different regions. Employing a Cold War mentality, they strive to reconstitute blocks on a global scale. This regressive endeavor poses a significant threat to the security and prosperity of nations. The Islamic Republic of Iran staunchly maintains that the formation of new East-West divides should not be permitted to take shape. Making trade corridors unsafe, diminishing countries from allies to dependents, stifling the economic progress of sovereign nations, and fomenting proxy wars across Asia and Europe are all elements of the sinister chain. Ironically, these actions are put forth in the name of defending democracy. However, the global community, including nations in West Asia, have discerned the true essence of Western democracy, an appellation that all too often is a code name for coup d'etats, occupations, and ongoing wars. The true nature of the liberal democracy project has become evident to the world, revealing it to be nothing more than a velvet glove hiding a cast iron hand. A school that was once envisioned as a beacon for the world has transformed into a cautionary tale illustrating the limitations and shortcomings of the system, nearing the conclusion of its trajectory. Ladies and gentlemen, right at a time 
where certain powers are steering the world towards more wars, the Islamic Republic of Iran has put forward a policy of neighborhood and integration. This policy of neighborhood is a benevolent one towards the region and is prioritized on the regional agenda. The Islamic Republic extends a warm welcome to any hand that is extended in friendship, firmly believing that an independent and robust neighborhood represents an opportunity for the entire region. We will welcome any extended hand quite warmly. A stable and powerful neighbor is healthy for a, a stable region. Having traversed Traverse two decades of imposed tensions and crises within our region, the fruit of resilience from free nations from Syria to Palestine to Yemen to Afghanistan. The future prospects of the region can be secured through the cultivation of profound mutual political trust, fostering extensive economic cooperation and establishing indigenous security measures. In alignment with this vision, Iran has established a new chapter of constructive relationship with like-minded neighboring countries through membership in regional and international mechanisms such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or the Northeast Economic Corridor we have prioritized these developments in order to bring their benefits and their fruits for all of the people of the region. The Islamic Republic of Iran also stands ready in order to decrease the effects of climate change to bring her capacity, her national capacity for renewable energy production and share those with other countries. In the security sector, the good neighbor policy seeks to increase regional cooperation and forbidden external meddling from the Caucasus to the Persian Gulf. Any type of foreign presence not only is not part of the solution, but it is the problem itself from the Caucasus to the Persian Gulf. Any type of foreign presence, not only it is not part of a solution, but it is the problem and the difficulty itself. We see the security of the neighbors as our own security and any type of insecurity for them is insecurity for us. With benevolence and goodwill, we have taken initiatives throughout the region, even though bringing together politics and security needs strengthening. This process needs to be strengthened and can only be, re be realized when it's accompanied by meaningful economic cooperation. The, West, the area of Western Asia, due to continued military attacks and occupations, it has been negated many opportunities for progress and development. Now that under the holy leadership of the supreme leader of the Islamic Revolution, Imam Khamenei, we have been able to drive back the rotten foundations of terrorism. We have created new opportunities for the region. The power of the Islamic Republic of Iran is an empowering security and we seek to extend our hands to neighboring countries in order to bring about new horizons of hope and success for the entire region. We believe that this is a collaborative effort in the Muslim world and this requires the participation of all and this is the only pathway to blessings and success in West Asia. The Islamic Republic of Iran has many and rare opportunities for investments which represent a great opportunity for countries from throughout the world and the region. Mr. President, 
Dear attendees, last year was the year of the victory of the people of Iran, certain Western nations, and their intelligence services during the past year made a grave mistake by the miscalculation that sought to diminish and undervalue and underestimate the power of Iranian people. Since the Islamic Revolution's victory under the leadership of Imam Khomeini, the enemies of Iran through various and continuous and incessant plots sought to impose their will on our people. More than 44 years, these policies have been defeated by the Iranian people and the Iranian people have stood victorious again and again. Now they are faced, the enemies are faced with an Islamic Republic that is the power of whom is based and the progress of which is based on profound ties with its people. During the past year, the people of Iran witnessed the most significant waves of a media and psychological war waged against them. The United States of America, which now possesses the biggest women's prison, therefore mother's prisons in Iran, can sincerely, sincerely be the defender of women's rights. Now, the picture that they sought to introduce to the world from Iran was by commingling legitimate with illegitimate news, by fabricating lies and fake reports, realities from Iran were censored throughout the world in order to negate the truth. Have you ever heard anything about the chemical bombardment against the Iranian people, those chemical weapons that were supplied by certain European countries to Saddam Hussein? Have you seen those whose bodies are severely and gravely damaged by chemical attacks who are still alive? but in hospital for 35 years. Have you seen their photos and images? Have you seen ill children who cannot overcome immune system diseases because of sanctions imposed on us that prevents obtaining proper medication for their treatment? Have you seen those, those photos? Uh, have you seen the pictures of patience, of sacrifice and steadfast fortitude of the Islamic people of Iran? Have you seen those pictures? Have you seen the unprecedented movement of the remembrance of the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, the Prophet Muhammad's grandson? 22 million strong marching towards his burial site for the anniversary of his martyrdom. Many countries' safeties today throughout our region are owed to the sacrifices of our martyr general Haj Ghassem Soleimani. Had it not been for his sacrifice, the hero of anti-terrorism activities, many of the countries in the region would have burned to the ground in the fires set by ISIS and Daesh. Have you, have you seen, do you recall the steadfast stories of heroic fights against terrorism through Hollywood-like generated reports in the news media? Have you seen the 25 million strong funeral uh, of the late commander General Qasem Soleimani throughout Iran. Those were censored throughout the world in the West. The terror act, terrorist act of his assassination was a prize given to Daesh on a silver platter whom according, whom according to certain American officials had confessed that ISIS was an American creation. This, his killing, his martyrdom was a gift to that same ISIS. Instead of recognizing him for his sacrifices, he is assassinated. Why? 
But the Islamic Republic of Iran, through the use of all tools and capacities in order to bring to justice the perpetrators and all those who had a hand in this government-sanctioned act of terror, will not sit until that is done. The blood of the oppressed will not be forgotten. And the robes of the guilty will bring them to justice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear heads of states, representatives, uh, most, most serious uh, threats in West Asia are extremism and fundamentalism. The eradication of terrorism through an all-encompassing fight against their very roots and the very reasons that gave rise to them throughout the world will not be achieved. The surgical use of terrorists by certain Western governments as a political tool will be overcome by the collective will of the people of the region. Certain intelligence and security services of Western uh, countries by in a very targeted fashion moving terrorists from area to area in the region in order to be able to capitalize on their devastating capacities they keep being asked why have you given refuge again and again to officially recognize terror groups who have the blood of over 17,000 Iranian martyrs on their hands, as well as our head of state, prime minister, and congressional representatives. Why do the Europeans behave in this way? They must give a reasonable answer. Why do they say and portray that they're fighting against terror, however they give refuge to terrorists? This is a double standard. Discrimination in the fight against terrorism is a green light given to terrorists themselves. Iran, who herself is, has been the biggest target of terrorism, has been at the forefront of fighting terrorism in the region. The people of the region see Iran as a secure partner for their own security, and the occupying regime uh, of Jeru in Jerusalem is seen as the perpetrator of much of the violence in the region. Has the time not come to bring an end to seven and a half decades of the occupation of Palestinian lands, of the demolition of their homes, of the blood of their women and children, and for the people of Palestine to be recognized officially as a country, the continuation of the occupation of the Zionist regime of certain Syrian and Lebanese and Palestinian territories and the lack of recognition the recognition to the people of Palestine has been a negation of their inherent rights and the lack of formulation of a proper Palestinian government with its rightful capital in Jerusalem has been a tool uh, used at the hand of certain governments in the region. S certain foundations that have been laid in the region by certain countries based on lies and destruction and occupation, those countries cannot be partners for peace. The c situation today in Afghanistan represents another example of foreign meddling in the region, which has led to the killing of over 70,000 men, women, and children. In Afghanistan, Iran insists on an all-encompassing government with the participation of all Afghan groups and population but the assistance of the world is needed in order to address the crisis of refugees who have been driven from their land from Afghanistan a great many of whom are being given refuge in Islamic Iran today vis-a-vis -vis the Ukrainian crisis and the war i would like to remind everyone again of our position unambiguous position 
as the Islamic Republic, we do not stand nor support any war anywhere, not in Europe nor anywhere else. We do not see any war to benefit any sides in Europe. Any type of tension and flaming, fanning the flames of violence in Ukraine has been done by the United States of America in order to weaken the European countries. And this is a long-term plan, unfortunately. We support any initiative for a cessation of hostilities and the war and support any political measure. We fully announce our support for such initiative. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the Americans, Americans leaving the JCPOA showed an official trampling upon their commitments by that government. It was an inappropriate response to our fulfillment of commitments within that framework by having broken the agreement uh, in, within the framework of Resolution 2231 passed by the UN Security Council. It has committed egregious and unilateral crime in the international arena. The United States of America must explain transparently and demonstrate in a verifiable fashion that it does wish to reach a proper conclusion and show her commitment and choose a way, choose a path, either JCPOA or not. And whether the European countries, uh, by the same token, who ignore resolution, UN Security Council Resolution 2231 and their commitments within the framework of the JCPOA, they will ultimately lose on this path. Rest assured that nuclear weapons have no place in the defensive doctrine and the military doctrine of the Islamic Republic of Iran the international organizations, multiple official reports have stated as much. The Islamic Republic of Iran as two decades ago will never, will never fall short of obtaining the inherent right of the Iranian nation to have peaceful nuclear energy. Not only we have lived up to our commitments, but unfortunately the United States not only doesn't adhere to her commitments within any framework of international treaties such as the NPT, but it does impose sanctions with that excuse as a political tool on people such as the people of Iran. But I am saying today that these sanctions have not yielded the desired results. It is time now for the United States to bring a cessation to her traveling on the wrong path and choose the right side. Ladies and gentlemen, humanity is entering a new framework. Old powers will keep their current downward trajectory. They are the past and we are the future. I repeat once again, they represent the past and we represent the future. We are the future. Our viewpoint towards the future is one of hope. The world awaits the day that has been promised by all faiths throughout the world, by all Abrahamic faiths, that ultimate seeker of justice does exist. We do believe that according to divine will, just as divine prophets have promised, justice and fairness will overtake the world. And the rule of the sincere people, those who truly follow the path of the omnipotent, will reverberate throughout the world a world that rejects ignorance. The world awaits the day in which 
the old path will come to an end. I do thank you for all of your attention and your presence here today. May the blessings of the Omnipotent be upon you and your loved ones. The Assembly would like to thank the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly would